Well, good evening, everybody. It's such an honor and a privilege to be here with you this evening. Sorry for the, the noise in the background. Um, well, as we, Lily and I always say every Tuesday night, welcome to the hour of power. It is truly an honor and a privilege to be here with you this evening. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm getting over a little cold and uh, my wife is still recovering. Uh, she still has a little bit of a cough and she wanted to be here, but she wanted to uh, take one more Tuesday night off. It has truly been a journey. I cannot, it's almost undescribable what has transpired in our family over the last couple of weeks. And we uh, thank you for all of the thoughts and prayers that have gone forth on our behalf. But we are glad to be back here with you. God bless you. Thank you so much for connecting with us. If you're just joining in the group, this is Zion Prayer, Zion Worship Center's Night of Prayer, Tuesday Night of Prayer. Uh, our senior pastor is Israel and Rosie Munoz. My name is Alan Lewis. My wife is Lilia, and we are the evangelists and pastors of Zion Worship Center. So we thank you so much for being here. We hope that you had an awesome holiday and new year. Um, we just want to uh, continue to encourage uh that you stay connected with us as we begin our journey in 2022. Uh, thank you for connecting uh, Armando and, his, and uh, Margarita and Daire Quinal and uh, Natalie Cassandra Ramos. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. God bless you. And um, uh, thank you for being with here, being here with us tonight. Oh, Johan, God bless you, my brother. Thank you for connecting with us. Ruth Hernandez, thank you for connecting with us tonight. Again, this is Zion Worship Center's Hour of Power Tuesday Night Prayer. Uh, as you are joining, if you have a prayer request or praise report, like we always say, go ahead and put it in the chat and we will acknowledge your request or petition when we get to that point of our in our in our service so i'll go ahead and give you a few minutes and i may cough here and there and uh, i'm going to apologize in advance <coughs> because i'm getting over this is the last little bit of a cold that i have been enduring um for the past couple of weeks um i do have a word for you this evening um a very quick and brief word of encouragement because I believe, uh, I might as well just dive into it, uh, that God has put something on my heart. I've kind of been dealing um, with a multiplicity of things over the last couple of weeks. And um, it's kind of also kind of something a pastor uh, mentioned or stated. He's kind of on this theme uh, uh, and this message series of, uh, developing habits. And, um, I don't know about you, but, um, my experience in life that, uh, God does not always, uh, um, uh, rescue us from our perils, but God is always there with us to give us the power and the ability to endure and overcome life's tragedies. And that's kind of what um, I've been experiencing is endurance. <clears throat> we go through things like disappointment, depression. My sister was talking about that with me this evening, how she is coming out of a state of depression. God has <clears throat> allowed her to go through it. And now she's on the other side of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So many times in our life that <clears throat> we, we go through things and we often wonder why we're going through things and why God hasn't not 
has not delivered us out of those things. Well, it could be that you're in that situation for a reason, and perhaps God wants you to learn by experience. He's there with you, you understand, and He will. And when you call on his name, he will give you the ability, he'll give you discernment to overcome, to, to, to endure, number one, endure, to get through it, learn from your experience, and then overcome it. Why? Because we are all called to be witnesses of his kingdom. How can we be a witness if we've never been through anything? Hmm? So, that's kind of what has been on my heart. When we get into situations, problems, what have you, I, I mean, we all know life is not um, a bed of roses. Um, it's probably more like a rose bush, and there are plenty of thorns that we have to navigate through with under the anointing power of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> so we all go through things, whether it's illness, job loss, death, a disappointment. We all go through things, okay? But when we are in the middle of the storm, like the disciples were out when they were on the boat, and they couldn't do anything else. They called on Jesus. Hey, we're in a storm. Can you provide some assistance, please? When we do that, then we have to trust God. It's like the Bible tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways. Acknowledge him. And he will what? Make your paths straight, right? So when we get into those situations, all we have to do is call on the Lord to give us the ability to endure and to overcome. So that's kind of what has been on my heart because this race of these last couple of weeks has been a race of endurance one that I've only been able to finish and navigate because of the Lord. I can tell you that for a fact. Okay. So let me share these these few good 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 evening, my sister Irma. Uh, you can Irma. Say I'm old and thank you. My sister Irma, God bless you. Thank you so much for connecting with us tonight. <clears throat> So my wife just gave me permission to uh, provide more detail of uh, what's happened. <clears throat> well, it all began really uh, with, and then I'll get, I'll get into the, the verse. Let me digress for a minute. Uh, during, during the Christmas holiday, we were at my son's. Joshua's, <coughs> excuse me, house in Palm Desert in California. And we all had agreed to meet there. All the entire family was going to meet because he's just moved into this house. Beautiful home in La Quinta. Um, and he, he agreed to host uh, Christmas. And our, our daughter, who lives in Oklahoma, uh, said, yeah, she was going to come with bring her daughter uh, my granddaughter, and but she was feeling ill, but uh, she kind of delayed her initial departure date, but then she came on anyway. So while uh, the whole family got together and we're cooking and, and enjoying each other's company, fellowship, what have you, but our daughter, her health, she was getting sicker and sicker and sicker. Well, to make a long story short, uh, she she went at, ahead and got tested, and it turned out she had COVID. And then my wife got sick, and I had already had COVID, so I got uh, a little um, 
cough, as you can tell, and a little sinus congestion, headache, and everything. Um, but I, I didn't really, because I've already had it, I didn't really get <clears throat> that sick. But my wife got really sick. My daughter, Jennifer, got really sick. And then my son, Dustin, got sick. And <clears throat> their father, who was also there, Tom, Tom his name, he got sick. And um, he did not recover. So he went home to be with the Lord <clears throat> this, on, the on the 10th of January. So um, that was hard. Uh, knowing someone that's been so close to you makes, the, makes it real, <clears throat> the experience of loss and uh, discouragement. But there's comfort in the fact that I know that Tom Hargett Jr. was saved. Okay. He loved the Lord. And there's hope in the fact that we're all going to see him again in glory. But life for the rest of the family has to go on because we're still here. We can't continue to, to, to live in... We have to acknowledge what has transpired and trust in the Lord that in this race, he's going to continue to comfort us and to give us strength that we can continue to do what? Be a witness for his kingdom. Too many times when Christians experience, believers experience uh, a, a discouragement, depression, they have a tendency not to move on because they're, they're, they wonder why this is happening to them. It's life. We live in a fallen world. But we serve a risen Savior who overcame this world already for us that we might continue to be connected to the source, which is Yahweh. So um, that's kind of what we've been dealing with. Uh, <coughs> my wife was hit hard with COVID and, and um, I'm not going to lie. It was hard. We prayed together. We stayed together. We wrote it out. You know? But in those times, that's when your faith is tested. And it's real easy to serve the Lord and everything's going great. But when you are confronted with life, you press into God. You press into him. And he will provide joy and peace. The, you know, the peace, you know what, you know, we, we, when we think of peace, you know, sometimes we get this, this, this picture in our mind. I don't know if it's for you, if it's an ocean with sand and, and, and palm trees or a nice grassy prairie or a meadow, but peace is the power that some, to, to bring something together that's been torn apart. That's what the peace of God does. Sometimes our lives are completely torn apart by events or circumstances, but the power of God is peace can bring them all back together again. <clears throat> and that's the peace that passes all understanding. When you bring your petitions to the Lord, it says, and then the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus, our Lord. But let me get on. I kind of got off on a tangent, and I apologize. But if you have your Bibles, and it kind of fits right into what I was going to, to share with you tonight. It is found in 2 Corinthians 5. If you have your Bibles or your tablets, 2 Corinthians 5. And I'm going to start with uh, verse 5. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 5. 
And Paul is talking about, you know, this life is temporary. Or this so this terrestrial plane, this body, this flesh that we have. Excuse me. We're just sojourners. This is just a temporary place. But at the point in time, God has prepared you for something more. And that's where we're going to pick up in verse 5. Paul says these words. Now the one who has fashioned you, and I'm reading from the NIV. Your translation might say prepared. Uh, now the one who has fashioned you, or uh, fashioned us, excuse me, for this very purpose is who? God. So you may be going through something. Your body may be experiencing something right now. But God prepared or fashioned you for this very reason. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God. <coughs> Excuse me. Who has given us the spirit as a deposit. The Holy Spirit. Okay. Guaranteeing us what is to come. So the Holy Spirit's purpose is to remind us of the fact that the one who fashioned you or prepared you for this purpose is God. He keeps us connected to God. Comforter, reminding us, hey, you're not in this battle by yourself. For In fact, the one who, very, who prepared or fashioned you this for this very moment in time is God because he provided a way for you to overcome it, to endure do it to bring glory to his name. Let me continue. Who has given us the spirit as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Verse 6. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live, what? By faith and not by sight. You know, during this 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 whole COVID experience, my wife was telling me that, you know, we hear the lost taste buds, smell and all that. But she said her tongue had had this color. And I said, well, let me see it. She didn't want me to see it. Okay? So when your body starts doing things you're not familiar with, you get, you get scared, right? But the word of God tells us even in those moments that we are to live, walk by faith and not by sight. In our spirit, we are to walk by faith. And faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We're literally putting our life in God's hands. It doesn't matter what it looks like, what I'm experiencing at this moment. God prepared me for this moment. God's going to deliver me through this moment. And I'm going to be a witness of the healing power, the deliverance that can only come from God. Do you know God fashions things that, and, 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 and like I always said, he's the greatest chess player, strategic Things that healing and 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 uh, uh, things we overcome can uh, how someone overcame that or, or made it through that experience can only be explained by the power of God. So we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident. Verse eight, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body. And at home with the Lord, we all would want, we, we're all ready to go sometime, right? <laughs> we can escape all of this and, and, and be with the Lord forever. Wouldn't that be awesome? But we know that we have a responsibility. We're here for a reason. God prepared us for this moment. He fashions for this moment. So as long as we we're here, we might as well do the work of the Lord, right? Right? So, let me read that verse again. We are confident, I say, and this is Paul talking, and I love how he writes. I say and would prefer to be away from the body 
you know, because he always complained later on in, in his epistles that I've got this thorn in my side. I pray to the Lord. He said, my grace is sufficient. Deal with it. <laughs> because <laughs> deal with it, Paul, because I've given you everything that you need. My grace is sufficient. Um, uh, so we are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Verse 9. So we make it our goal, right? I, I just, what I just said, to please him. <coughs> Who? The Lord. By being his witness, by testifying, right? Whether we are at home in the body or away from it. Verse 10. For we must all appear uh, before the before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. So we might as well do what is good while we are here, while we're able. So trust in him. We, we're going to go through things. That is why we're here. That's why we come together in prayer to support one another, to bear one another's burdens, to encourage one another. <coughs> We're all go I shared all that to say, hey, we all go through things, okay? We all go through things. But even when we're going, even when we're in the middle of it, even when with thundering and lightning, the wind is blowing and you can't see the end, God is still with you and he prepared you. I'm telling you, he prepared you for this moment. So all you have to do when you're in the middle of it is to trust him and put your life in his hands. And he will guide you. He will direct you. He will empower you to, <coughs> excuse me, to endure and overcome. To bring glory to his name so that when you, so that you can be a witness. You can tell somebody, hey, I, I, I've been there. I thought it was over, but God. What did our pastor say? But God. There's always a but God. There are many times when I know the devil tried to take me out, but God prepared me for a time and a season just like this. So that's the word. So I hope it was an encouragement. I hope you received it. I know it was for somebody. I had to share what God put up on my heart and, and to give to you because it's something that Lilia and I have experienced over the last three weeks, four weeks, a month. We're still here. We're still alive and kicking because of God in our lives. His grace. Remember, His grace and His mercy. His mercies are new every morning, but his grace, oh, his grace is sufficient. It's powerful. I don't know what we would do without the grace of God in our lives. So, uh, do we have any prayer requests? We're going to move into our, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, uh, we're going to move into our prayer requests both from the Marina Valley Manors and on um, what's in the chat here. So if you haven't had a chance, go ahead and take an opportunity to um, post your request.
Okay, from the <clears throat> excuse me, from the Moreno Valley group page, I only see three. Melissa Marie. She's requesting for prayers for her and her family. So if you can just join me, <clears throat> lifting up Melissa Marie. Gracious God and Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we can just come together, Father God, and recognize that you are our God and that you loved us so much that you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, to overcome death, hell, and the grave for us. So, Father, we come lifting up Melissa, Marie, and her family. We don't know everything that is going on, but, Father, we lift your child up to you. <clears throat> we ask, Father God, that you would intervene in a supernatural way bring healing and restoration to her family in the name of Jesus. Well, Marissa, uh, I'm sorry, Melissa also said that her husband is in ICU. So we lift up uh, Father God, Melissa's husband. Father, he, she states that he is in intensive care. So Father, we ask that you would just heal his body from all sickness and all disease, that you restore him to perfect health by the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, so that he can be a living witness of the goodness and greatness of you. We don't know the condition of his salvation, but Father, if, if he's not in, the, in uh, the fold, we ask, Father God, that someone would go, go by his way and plant a seed in his heart. In Jesus' name. Nora Patricia Roman. Excuse me. She says, please keep my husband Robert in prayer so that he can find a job in California. He and I will be praying for, for your family as well. So, Father, we come lifting up Nora and her family, Lord. We ask that you would just provide work for her husband Robert, that you would lead him to the perfect job that will support his family, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, my brother, Johan, he put in a request in the chat. He says, tomorrow I will have to deal with my legal problems. <coughs> Would like to ask for more prayer. At times, I could not sleep because of my mistake. My brother, we're with you. The Lord knows we all make mistakes. So don't lose sleep. Don't lose sleep over that. It ain't worth it, my brother. Just give it to the Lord. We're going to stand in the gap for you, but give it to the Lord. And leave it there. That's why the Bible says, cast your cares to the Lord. For his yoke is easy and his burden is light. <clears throat> Gracious God and Father, we come lifting up our dear brother, Johan and Socorro. We ask, Father God, that you would, as, as you allowed me to speak earlier, let your peace that passes all, all understanding guard his heart and his mind so that he can sleep. Holy Spirit, move in a supernatural and mighty way yes. in his yes. life. Yes, Holy Spirit. Remind him that he is the head, not the yes. tail, that he is above and not beneath. That he serves the greatest attorney, the doctor of doctors. And, you, and that you will give him the power to navigate and endure this situation and overcome it. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> because, Father God, you've never lost a case in a courtroom. Bless my brother and my sister in the name of Jesus Christ. I 
Hello, my brother and sister, Alan and Maria. God bless you. Please prayers for my aunt, Monica, as she continues fighting. But yes, we lift up our dear sister, Monica, who, who is still on the battlefield, Father God. We ask, Father God, for your continued strength in her body and in her mind. Give her your peace, Father God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, I come lifting up my brother Alan in Indiana as he is also recovering from COVID. My dear brother, Father God, continue to heal his body from all sickness and all disease. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> Your word says to call upon the elders of the church and they are to lay hands and they will recover. So we are symbolically reaching out our hands, Father God, in honor of your power. Yes. We ask, Father God, that you would touch his body and heal him in yes. the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Johan is also asking for a prayer for Sokoto's brother, Augustine. We lift, Father God, we come lifting up our dear brother Augustine, Father God, who's also battling COVID. We ask, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would just heal him from all sickness and all disease. In Jesus' name, let your peace, Father God, be in his heart and in his mind. In Jesus' name. Santeline Franco, please pray for my aunt. They have Alzheimer's disease. Day by day, it's getting worse. We have already lost three family members due to Alzheimer's. <clears throat> Excuse me. Father, when I come lifting up uh, Santeline Franco's aunt, don't know her name. Father, she's battling this very debilitating disease of Alzheimer's. We ask, Father God, yes, Father. that you would touch her <clears throat> mind, that you would open her mind, that you would heal her mind, yes, heal her heart, restore her by the power of the blood of Jesus <clears throat> Christ. We lift her and we bring her to your throne yes, that she might experience grace and mercy, Father God, to help her in this time of need, that she might still be able to communicate to her family. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and Father, we're also asking for peace for a Santeline Franco and her family, as she stated as a confession that they've already lost three family members. Father, we're asking for your peace on this family. Yes, Father. In Jesus' name. Okay, we're going to close out with our corporate prayer. Uh, as always, we're going to remember our, our men and women who are serving in the armed forces, our first responders, nurses. As, as we all know, <clears throat> that this Delta variant, Omicron, whatever they want to call it, is we have cases springing up here and there, and there are nurses that are going, that are first responders, that are in the ERs, that are, that are in, uh, 
handling these patients um, and the police officers and the sheriff's department, deputy sheriffs that are in the streets and um, the doctors and the school teachers. Keep them in your prayer as we do it corporately here, but remember them in your in your prayer <laughs> closets. And uh, missionaries. We have to remember these folks because they're on the battlefield like we are. Amen. So, Father God, I come lifting up our Armando and uh, Elizabeth, Esbede Diaz and their family, Tade and Miguel Quinal and their family, Father God. Come lifting up Natalie, Cassandra, Ramos and her family. I lift up my brother, Yohan and, and Socorro Mueller. Lift up Ruth Hernandez, Father God. Uh, be with them and their family. Bianca, my sister Bianca, lift up her and her family right now in the name of Jesus, mighty soul. Peña and her family, Father God, I come lifting up Gloria Munoz, the entire Munoz family, our pastor, Israel and um, Rosie Munoz, and my brother uh, Josh and Abraham and their families, Father God. Come looking up my sister Irma Alvarado and her family, Father God. Bless them and keep them safe from all harm and all danger. Christy, Father God, I come lifting up her and her family. Marquita Hernandez and her family, I come lifting up them to you, Father God. Raquel Valdivinos and her family. My brother and sister from Indiana, Alan and Maria Lutz. Veronica Castellanos and her family, Jesse Ruiz and, her, and their family, Maggie Trujillo and her family. Again, my sister, uh, Santillon Franco and her family, Father God. Lola Lomi, Lomili and her family, Father God. Lord, I just come lifting up these, the remnant that have assembled here in cyberspace, Father God, coming together corporately, Father God, to lift up your name, to share one another's burdens, to pray for one another in spirit and in truth. Father, we come lifting up those men and women who are serving in the armed forces, those who are scattered all over the planet. Keep them safe from all harm and all danger. Father, we come lifting up the missionaries to you, Father God, who have made a commitment to share the gospel to all who would give an ear to hear on every soil and on every continent. Father, we ask you to keep them strong and keep them safe from all harm and all danger. Father, we come lifting up the first responders, Father God, those who serve the, their communities as LVNs and RNs and nurses, aides, Father God. We come lifting up those who are serving as doctors in the ERs, Father God, who are on the front lines of this COVID-19 epidemic. Father, we come lifting up those who are serving as deputy sheriff officers and police officers, those who are serving as firefighters and paramedics, Father God, who are on the battlefield, Father God. We ask that you protect them and keep them safe. Those who are serving as police officers, Father God, we ask, Father God, that you would keep them safe from all harm and all danger. Those who are serving as school teachers, Father God, uh, uh, um, those who are serving as crossing guards and day school attendants, bus drivers, Father God, school bus drivers, community bus drivers, Father God, keep them safe from all harm and all danger in the name of Jesus Christ. And we come lifting up those who are serving as pastors and lay ministers, Father God, 
and, con- and churches all over the nation and all over the planet who are lifting up your name above every name in the name, and that is the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, Father God, that you would be with them, those individuals as they continue to hold up the bloodstained banner, confessing and professing the gospel of Jesus Christ to all those who would listen and would give an ear to hear. We ask, Father God, that you would be with those individuals, strengthen them, that those are are those are the are the remnant, the faithful few, those who are preparing for the harvest. We ask, Father God, that you that you would be with them, encourage them, and strengthen them in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we come lifting up our own pastor, Israel, and Rosie Munoz. So we ask, Father God, that you, you that you would continue to endow him with wisdom and knowledge from on high as he continues to lead and guide your church called Zion in the city of Moreno Valley. We ask, Father God, that you would strengthen him in Jesus' name. We ask, Father God, that you would lift up those who are serving in public offices, the president, the senate, the congressmen and women, the local mayors, Father God, that they would do what is right under your sight. We give you praise, Father God, and glory for all that you've done and all that you will continue to do in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. And uh, uh, Nora Gonzalez, Father God, I just see her that she just, uh, I ask you to be with her and her family. I may have missed her name during the prayer. We lift her up to you, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. As we bring this service to a close, we will never close this service without giving someone who does not know Jesus Christ an opportunity to give their heart to the Lord. So if that's you, I'm speaking to you, put the burrito down. And um, just repeat after me. It's very simple. Just say Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I I know that uh, I have not walked in a way that is becoming, but I understand now that Jesus Christ is your son. And he came here for me. And he overcame death, hell, and the grave that I might have life eternally. I believe that he is son of the living God and I accept him into my heart and I choose today to make him Lord of my life. And I will follow him all the days of my life. My friend, if you prayed that prayer, you have been born again. And we welcome you this day to the family of God. God bless you. And if that is you, go ahead and direct message us in this chat or find us on Facebook, Zion Worship Center, Marino Valley, and send us a message because we have some gifts that we'd like to give to you to help you along your way. And if you don't have a church home, you're always welcome to join us any Sunday or Wednesday. Sunday is 10 a.m., Wednesday 7 p.m. But we would like to know, our pastor would like to know if you gave your life to Jesus Christ. Because we want to support you. We love you. We want to support you on on this journey. So thank you so much for connecting with us. Lily will be back next week. And uh, uh, we look forward to seeing you again. We love you. God bless you. And as we always say, remember this very important thing. Don't ever forget it. Jesus is Lord. God bless you.